at the analyst desk. Thank you, gentlemen. With that win, Edward Gaming have clinched a spot in tomorrow's semifinals where they'll join SKT and AHQ, as well as one more team to be decided later today. So there's still an opportunity for any of these teams at the bottom here to get up into that fourth slot. We'll figure that out a bit later. But breaking down this victory here for EDG, very methodical, and as they mentioned, you know, with Def's interview, they they're starting to execute on everything they said they would coming into this tournament. Yeah, it wasn't a trap game at all. They came at it full force. They didn't pull any punches. And the fact that they brought out Jinx showed that they weren't even going to use this game to try something new. They're like, no, we want to crush them as fast as possible. We want this game to be over with and move on to the next one. So that was a big display of power from EDG. Yeah, honestly, I think this is something which you should hold account for EDG that they didn't slack off. They really wanted to win the game from the start. And I think yeah, good coaching. Nobody actually fell behind, did anything random. Pawn here and there got maybe a little bit caught out, but overall the team just went full steam from the beginning. Good, yeah. good coach. I actually uh, couldn't coach. believe the uh, Jinx pick coming through as well. That's a pick that we expected to see when we saw the trip yes, and is. you saw exactly how strong it is because Thresh Jinx is so good in a 2v2, but also a 2v1 lane. You saw the flay onto the chompers. That is so much CC that can come through, and they're pretty good at the lane. Uh, by the way, I have to say, I love the triple blasting wand there by energy <laughs> in the mid lane. Just all the AP, that's thrift shopping right there, taking a lesson from EDG <laughs> in thrift shopping. Uh, but again, this just points to what we were talking about earlier with their attitude about the game. These guys are going at it. They're not admitting defeat. They're going to take all of the fights they can. We saw them trying things, looking for you know brushes to camp, even even in those giant deficits. Yeah, and that's really interesting because we saw in the international wildcard they were happy to take Rumble into NAR and they were pretty much punished for that matchup in the end of this game. So I think that their top laner, especially Thaldrum, would have learnt a lot going up against Koro in that lane. I think they've taken a heck of a lot away from this tournament in general and it's not every day you get to play against those players. I, would, I think that's their mentality too coming into this. So I, like, shout out to Besiktas and the way that they play the game because even an international wildcard, they would have huge deficits, 6, 7K gold, and they'd keep playing to win the game. They never got into the defeatist mindset where they're like, this game's already over, let's just play for the next one. They're always getting as much as they can out of the games. Yeah, I think also just to touch on my point before, the only time I actually saw EDG a little bit overextended was the 4 vs. 1. You can't 4 vs. 1 Dumbledore? <laughs> he invented the 4 vs. 1. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. All right, well, I do want to look at you know, EDG a little bit more as they did uh, drop that game to SKT, but they are looking a little bit more in form here, maybe dealing with some of that jet lag. And as they move to, well, we'll talk about this in just a moment. I'm going to interrupt myself because we have our interview ready. We're going to toss it over to Shox for a word with our winners. Thank you so much, Dash. I'm joined here by Koro after that victory that locked EDG in in the playoffs as well. First off, congratulations. Now, Koro, you've had a good tournament so far. A lot of eyes were on the mid lanes, but it seems that it's the top lanes that have really taken charge. What do you think has been the most important for a team strength? Uh, uh你觉得那是哪个更重要？我觉得中上都很重要，但是中路是节奏点，因为你中路有优势，你能推线，可以帮助上下取得优势，也可以帮助打野取得优势，所以我觉得中路在前面的就是节奏能力上更强。U
You've locked in your spot now in the playoffs, as is SKT and AHQ. Are you surprised at all at the way this tournament has went in teams of the regions that have shown up and done well? Uh, you uh, I think it's the recent performance of AHQ has been really strong. Their players are performing really well. Not necessarily that the European American teams are weaker than the Chinese or the LMS teams. Uh, it's just that currently, uh, it so happens, AHQ players are performing really well. Well, that's a nice way to look at it. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Good luck in the playoffs. As for us, back over to you, Dash. Thank you, Shox. Um, Dash, you got rudely interrupted before. Please continue. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Uh, I do actually want to talk about EDG and SKT because they might come up against each other here in the semifinals or the finals of the tournament. And we, we heard it there, some big words about who will come out on top next time. Do we believe that EDG, the way they've performed today, are back in form and can give SKT a run for their money? Yeah, like any good one-sided analyst, I have completely thrown out the performance against, S against <laughs> SKT yesterday. No, in all seriousness, I think they do have a shot, but I think SKT are looking very dominant. Yeah, they definitely have a shot, but the fact that he's, Coral was talking about being better than Marin, I think that's going to be a fantastic matchup to watch because that's going to be a head-to-head -head clash, and Marin has been having a fantastic tournament so far. Of course, that's a match that may come. We have more matches at hand here. I want to look forward to our next match, SKT versus Fnatic here because... Fnatic needs to win this game. They're in that group of teams down there that are vying for that final spot. What are they going to do to get a victory here? Yeah, I hope that Fnatic is pulling out a really aggressive uh, playstyle, maybe going for tower dives in the early game, maybe lane swap and go for this 4v1, 3v1 dive. And I think that SKT might, with the over-aggressiveness in the early game, gets a little bit shaken up. But I expect SKT to actually be really, really strong and just show their dominance. Yeah, I expect this to be a game where... I, is it Easy Hoon or Faker playing? Because it's, it's Faker. It is Faker. It's so faker. I actually thought this would be an uh, Easy Hoon game because this is one of those games where you can put the brick wall up in the mid lane and I think just focus on top lane and try and shut Hooney down. I feel like SKT is being really nice to EU and NA. They're like, you guys get to play against Faker. Don't know if you'll get to do it later on in the tournament, but here you go. <laughs> you get this opportunity to play against the God of Death. Well, well, well. I think that Fnatic at least can make a, a run for yeah. the money. Well, we'll, well find out saying, soon fun. enough. We do have to take five or 3.5 to be more precise, but don't touch that dial because when we come back, it's a clash between former world champions as SKT Telecom T1 takes on Fnatic. We will directly go to playoffs. Yeah. Really? Yes. 100%? Yes. yes. 100%, this is yes. happening. Narde, believe. Death gets excited as he takes down the Jedi. Yeah, Dumbledore's gonna fall down. Double kill for Deft. His energy's gonna get exhausted. Koro, he's burning down. Is he gonna die? Flashes out. Oh. There's the summoner spell used to get him into position. Here comes the Destiny. Oh, the and Nar. the back as well from that Nar. Able to get the exhaust off, but Deft being the hero. Oh. Flashes over the Oscar. No Triple kill. The Oculus comes back alive. EDG, they get the rest of the job done.